This weekend's Yubi Chef menu is on the way. 10 dishes that I'm gonna to put together, show you how to plate them up, prepare them, really, really simple. I've just got a few trays, spoons, a little bit of oil, mold and salt, my trusty knife, chopping board. It's that simple to put together. Let's get cooking. First course, as usual, is our weekly bake. This week, real favorite, undo my bag in here. You've got a Marmite sourdough, beautiful. So Marmite sourdough, it's got a little bit of cleanse just on the outside. That's gonna go in the oven eight to 10 minutes, basically until it's re-crispened on the outside. When it comes out, make sure you leave it for a few minutes and then the crispness will sort of just build on the outside and then you can cut it through and it's not gonna be sort of like really steaming hot. So my garnishes, get your little chicken scratchings, which are here. It's lovely chicken, uh, crispy skin, which we've done and we've chopped it up nicely. And then what you want to do is get your little butter and then just get the crispy scratchings, pile them on top and then you can pick it up once you've got enough around it where you're not going to get into a mess of all the butter melting in your hands. But you see I'm just pushing that lovely crispy chicken skin into the butter, doing it above a tray so you can catch any scratchings that fall off. Don't hold it for too long otherwise the butter will start to melt just like that. Bring over my board, on that goes. Let's get a few just on the top to make extra scratchings. And there you go. I'll wait for my sourdough to be ready now. We'll all be uh, come back and I'll slice the sourdough and be ready to serve. There right, we go. Now my sourdough, out of the oven, watch the tray. Now I need to just leave that for a few minutes. First of all, but you see that lovely and crisp, look at that lovely little decoration on the top. Slice it, serrated knife, just put your hand just on the top and really, really gently. There we go, just take some nice slices. You can instantly smell that marmite in there. Oh, delicious. So, let's get ready to put that on our board. See there, see how you've got a marmite going all between the layers. So, let's get that onto our board there and we're all ready to serve up. So you've got that lovely smoked chicken butter, rolled in crispy scratchings, Marmite sourdough. What a delicious way to start this week's Chibi Chef menu. First start of view is uh, this lovely Gravelax. What we've done, we've cured this in beetroot and dill. Um, taken out the cure, it's got lots of fresh di uh, dill chopped on the top. And then we've just sliced it and just laid it onto a card. I'm going to leave out room temperature just to come up so that you're going to taste everything that's in there. And then you've got your black treacle soda bread just here. Put that in the oven, about five minutes or so, just to warm that up. And then I've got my creme fraiche as well out room temperature. So back in a second and we will show you how to put this together. So, let's get our soda bread out of there. Get that, just let that cool down slightly. Then, so with your Gravelax, this is made with chalk stream trout so uh, take that little bit of paper off the top look at that color vibrant orange smells absolutely delicious with that lovely dill going through there then take your plate and you just want to take it off in kind of the nice layers and what's just you do is just fold it round do it piece by piece because that way you get like a nice little bit of height so you're gonna get all this nice little portion of trout here, get all these pieces on, like so, show off that lovely bit of dill, that beetroot, there you go, so that's all my sea trout, all arranged, then just get a tiny bit of oil just on top of that soda bread, just like so, a tiny bit of salt, there you go onto your plate. And then finally, got a little pan of water here. Bring that over and get a nice little spoon. You want a nice shape to a spoon as well. So you can see that shape there. That's gonna give you a really nice quenelle. And then get your creme fraiche in your pot. A little dip in the water. You don't want it to be too hot. It'll tap off the water and then just go in there like so. Back in if you need to dip it. And then one final curl back in and there we go okay so simple simple presentation 
but stunning flavour, look at that. Lovely trout, soda bread, creme fraiche to start off. Next starter for you, we've got a chicken Kiev, but it's not just any chicken Kiev. Here it is, looks, uh, looks normal on the outside, but in here you've got comfy chicken, so comfy chicken fry around the outside, and then in the centre you've got a summer truffle butter, so lots of grated summer truffle in there. That's going to go for about 12 to uh, 14 minutes in the oven, and that goes. And then my garnishes, for when that comes out, I've got a chilled little puree here of watercress. I've got fresh watercress to add even more peppery note to it. Uh, a little grilled king oyster mushroom, five to six minutes in the oven, and some pickled shallots. They're just going to really kind of bring everything alive on that. So make sure you get your scotch egg, sorry, your Kiev in, and then put your mushroom in a little bit later so you don't want that to dry out. Keep the puree in the fridge, or make sure that's nice and cold, and then we'll be back, all ready to plate this up. So our Kiev is nearly, really, nearly uh, coming out now. So touch of rapeseed oil, just on a watercress, a little bit of salt, just dress that. Remember, no pepper, of course, because the watercress is already nice and peppery. Then, let's get our little chill watercress puree. I'm going to just use a ladle because I'm going to spread it out nicely. So, just with the back of a ladle, you see there, do that so it's nice and round on your plate. Spend a bit of time making sure that's looking lovely. There you go. Then what we want is we've got our pickle shallots ready to go. Our Kia, how that comes. And then out comes our king oyster mushroom. Tiny bit of salt on your Kiev just before it goes on the plate. Then you can put the watercress on first, you put the Kiev completely up to you. Let's get that Kiev on there. Then let's get our mushroom. I'm just going to cut that in half. And I'm going to get a little piece of that. You see that, that lovely there? It's lovely and meaty. Really, really nice. And let's get some of our watercress, probably fresh leaves. Get some of that building around the outside of the plate. Not covering stuff up, just so that you can see everything. And once they're all arranged, we'll go back and we'll have a little, little rearrange just before we put our shallots on. Those shallots are going to cut through all that rich breadcrumbs. So a few more bits of watercress. There we go. Quick little tidy up. It's a problem with green sauces. They get everywhere. And then let's get some pickle shallots. Some of those. See that lovely pinkiness from there? That kettle Cabernet Sauvignon vinegar that we've pickled those in. So, a few more shallots and we're almost ready to serve up. Get plenty of those on. You've got a real rich summer truffle butter in there. So, those. Tiniest bit of rapeseed oil. And there you have it. That's our little Kiev. Really rich summer truffle butter inside. Watercress. King oyster mushroom, hope you enjoy it. So, top of the season for tomatoes, I like tomatoes, simply the best. So here I've got a yellow tomato gazpaccio, and then we've got some semi-dried tomatoes, calamata olives, we've got a lovely little olive, uh, black olive puff pastry just there. That's gonna go in the oven, just one to two minutes, just to warm them up. And then I've got a chilled bowl, I've just had that in the freezer, I've just taken that out. First of all, get your yellow tomato gazpacho for that vibrant. We've emulsified this. There's no cream or anything like that in there, of course, but you can see it looks lovely and creamy because we've blitzed it really, really high power um, with a lovely bit of rapeseed oil in there as well. So take your tomatoes and just kind of arrange them in the soup so you can sort of see all what's going on. I've got some semi-dried yellow tomatoes in there. Got a bit of a tiger tomatoes. So get some of those, get some of the actual calamata olives as well. Just arrange that all the way around. And make these where well, we've just semi-dried them, they're, they're sort of nice and sweet. That gazpaccio has got a little bit of nice acidity to it. So that's all ready to go. 
like so. Then basil oil, to finish off. So, nice bit of basil oil. All the way around so you get a really good hit of that. Lovely. And let's get our olive pastries out. So literally just very, very quick. I'm just serving these on a little napkin, just on the side. And then these are just so you can kind of dip into the gazpacho. And get a lovely little salty hit. So there you go, lovely little start if you chill gazpacho. Hope the weekend weather plays ball so this will really hit home. And those lovely little calamata on the puff, olive puff pastries. First main course for you coming up now is a, is a place cooked on papillot. So in here, we've got a lovely foil parcel. Inside is the place, all filleted off. We've coloured it lightly as well just to get even more flavour on it. Touch of fennel, bit of star anise, bit of white wine, bit of butter. That's going in the oven for say 16 to 18 minutes. My garnishes when that's ready. I've got a uh, clam sauce here which is based fish stock using all of the, uh, the bones from the place. Then we've got some nolly prat in there, we've got the clams in there as well. Pull all the clams, lovely, uh, sweet, lovely, and juicy. And then the garnishes, look at that, lovely bit of cucumber compressed, which makes the flavour even better. You've got a bit of dill oil in there, fresh dill as well. And then here we've got a little knocky. Both, both of these are going to go in the water five to six minutes. So this one's going in the water when, five, when the, the place is nearly ready. And then this is going in the oven. Put a tiny bit of water just in the bottom. We've already added a little bit of butter, and that's just going to help it kind of just stay nice and um, nice and moist whilst, whilst it cooks. So we'll be back once our place is cooked. We'll have both of these, this in the water, this in, our, in the oven, and the sauce heated up. So. We are ready to plate our place up now. Got my hot bowl ready to go. There's my sauce. So I've just brought that just to the boil, taking it straight off. And then here, let's get our cucumber out. So I'm just using a slotted spoon, be careful, it's nice and hot. So let's keep that on there. Meanwhile, the place comes out, I'm happy off, and I'm knocking. So let's get this all plating up now. Take a knife or a pair of scissors. Just cut open your cucumber, and when you cut it open, just try and save some of the oil which comes out. If you can see that there, just nice little oil which comes out, and we're going to use some of that for the dish. A little bit of molten salt on the top. Then let's get our puppy off. Let's just lift that out. Let's just pull clean film off. We've got a bit of lemon in there, just baked with it. So let's get that out of the way, then get your fillet and just very very carefully, this place is of course very delicate, just lift your fillet off, just going to get rid of the cooking liquor over there, save it for a sauce, a bit of salt again, right then let's get our cucumber, spread that deal out on the top, nice bit of cucumber just in there, gnocchi, be really delicate with the gnocchi, they are lovely and lovely and nice to eat, but just a tiny bit of egg yolk going through there and the potatoes, so if you knock them about too much, they will break up, so nice and careful. Then let's get our fish, and again, nice little palette knife or fish slice. Let's just put a piece of fish on there, like so. Then what's left to do, get some of your clams, this is Pallord clams. So I'm going to put some of the shells which we've sent you. Don't worry, all the clams have been nicely cleaned, so I'm going to just show off a few of those on top of the fish, around. So make sure you kind of place the clams first of all, and then we can come back with our sauce thereafter. So sauce, plenty of sauce on this one. It's a saucy kind of dish. Then finishing up, as I said, remember, we saved that bit of dill oil in there. Just come back and split the sauce. As you split it, you see you make that lovely little colour with the green against the white. Get all of that on there, pack the flavour. Look at that, what a lovely light 
summery fish dish. Beautiful place, that vibrant cucumber, gnocchi and pelor clams. Up next we've got a pork belly dish. This is pork belly which has been brined first of all, then we've just drained it off, confit it very, very slowly. Uh, it's got the bone taken out, it's got a lovely, the skin's all coloured up. That's going to go in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. Just going to crispen the skin up nicely. Then we've got a little peas on the front side, so normally this looks like a shoe farsi, but this is lettuce around the outside. Inside you've got fresh peas, tarragon, lovely little bit of cream sauce, a touch of garlic. That will go in a pan of scalding water, 10 minutes. Keep it in the cling film as well. And then when it comes out, lift it out very, very carefully with a spoon. Cut the top off, so just snip that cling film off, and then just pull back the sides, put it onto your spoon, and we'll show you, just turn that over onto your plate. And then another garnish, black wooden cigarette. So 10 minutes this is into the water, and our black, uh, black wooden cigarette is just five, six minutes in the oven, just to re-crispen the foil brick pastry. Sauce is a side of sauce with some fresh apple in there. That's just gonna get warmed up on the stove. Very, very, very simple to put this together. So we'll be back in about 16 minutes once our pork belly is hot. So, let's get our pork belly going. Again, little tray lined with a bit of chain cloth. And let's pull our peas from the stays out. Bring my side of sauce over. You see that? Just have it back on, just with that little end of the clean film pointing up. I'm just gonna leave that for a minute, just to calm down slightly whilst I get my pork belly out. There it is, and there is my cigarette. So, tiniest bit of sea salt, on salt, sorry, just on top of our belly. Then scissors, carefully cut through. Be really, really gentle with this now because it's delicate. So, let's just ease the clean film, like so, and then Put your spoon, turn it over, just leave it on the spoon, that's the tip of the day. Pull the clean film off, let it have a little drain, bent onto our plate. So look at that, lovely and hot. One move. Right, let's get our pork belly. So pork belly out on the board, let's get rid of that hot tray. Pork belly on. Cigarette, now that comes, just going to give it a tiny little trim on the top. There it is. Then I'm going to set my cigarette just on the top, like so. A little clean up of, as we go. Finally, let's get the sauce. So, you've got some apple in there, so just get a nice bit of apple on top and around, there you go, beautiful, so that is my confit pork belly, lovely little piece of the says black pudding cigarette, uh, and then of course that side of sauce, enjoy. Beautiful vegetarian course for you now coming up, look at this, courgette flowers, Bang on in season, look at them, they're stuffed with a lovely little Israeli couscous in the centre and then I've just wrapped them up in clean milk, they're going to get steamed. So I've just got a little makeshift steamer here, just to show you how easy it is, just a big sieve or colander, whichever you prefer, just put them on like that, basically you want something like which is nice and wide, then you haven't got to kind of jiggle them about too much because they're very, very delicate. So six to eight minutes for them. Our little fritter misto of courgette, so a lightly battered courgette flour, pieces of courgette. Again, six to eight minutes in the oven. And then just time to show you the garnishes. Little courgette salad here. Take a spoon. Give your lemon dressing a nice little stir. And then spoon over. Tiny bit of seasoning, just a little bit. And then just use your fingers, give it a little stir about and then all that lemon dressing is going to start to work on the courgette now, wilt it down slightly. That can be set aside. Keep some lemon dressing for when we come back plating the dish. Little harissa mayonnaise, rose harissa, touch of spice. This is just going to go onto the stove last second. Keep stirring it around. 
and just warm it up. You don't want to split it, but it's nice having a really nice warm harissa mayonnaise with our courgette flowers. So back in about five minutes, I'm going to plate this one up. So let's bring my sauce over. There's a, just a warmed up plate. We've got a harissa sauce, that mayonnaise all heated up. We've got a salad, we've got a dressing. Right, undo your foil. Now be careful with these because they'll be hot. So out onto your little draining cloth. And then what we want to do at that stage, use a pair of scissors. See how I just carefully cut. And watch this because they're really, really delicate. So cut them all the way up. And the other end, we'll do the same with the next one. So take your time and then just pull that clean film back, like so. So, that's our courgette flowers, all ready to go. Tiny bit of seasoning on there, like so. Then, let's get some, first of all, let's get our harissa mayonnaise. Make sure you've got your little uh, fritta misto ready to go. Let's get our mayonnaise. So, on. Let's get another one on there. And then a few nice little swipes of that. Let's get some salad. Give it a little drain as you get it on the plate. It will go in the center with a nice pile. And a little bit to one side. And we've got two flowers that we're presenting up here. So that's all ready to go. And let's go back. First courgette flour, second one. A little tidy as we go. Then you're all good to go with your little fritamisto. So get a bit of flour in there. We've got some pieces, some of the actual baton of courgette. Another one on the side. I'm happy with that. Finally, lemon dressing. Get a little bit of that, just again, split that kind of sauce out slightly as you dress it. There you go. Beautiful. That's my little stuffed courgette flowers, harissa mayonnaise, raw courgette salad, and a fritto misto courgette. First dessert for you is a lovely and summery capaccio peach. So the peach comes to you all sliced. But you can see there, that's the presentation side because it starts on the outside and then you've got that final bit on the inside. So what you want to do is just turn it over, like so, take off the bottom card, and then, see I'm just going to peel that piece of paper off, and then if you like, you can put the, the plate on top of it, it's probably the safest. So put the plate on top, turn it over, and just use it just to rearrange just before you take the paper off. Look at that, all going good so far. Then, here we've got a lemon verbena syrup. So, lovely uh, verbena, just infused with a really nice sugar syrup. Use a pastry brush or a spoon just to get a nice bit of syrup on your peaches. Really, really important this because it's gonna dress them. Like when you do a fruit salad, you put that lovely bit of sugar syrup on there. It's gonna start to really work, soften the peach slightly. So, that's all on. See, it's looking beautiful and shiny. Next, take a little bit more of that syrup, just over your raspberries. Just give them a little, so they're all nice and dressed. Then, a little raspberry gel. So you've got your little compostable back here, piping back here. Cut off one corner, make sure that goes in the bin so it doesn't get confused on the plate. End up on the plate, sorry. And then take your raspberry gel and just pipe. Not necessarily a set pattern, but just nice and spread out. So then each bite you're gonna get a lovely bit of raspberry gel. So that's all on there. Next up, take a little spoon. Carefully put your raspberries on. Just looking like they've just fallen off the bush. Not too placed. So 
So get those all spread out. There you go. Then white chocolate arrow, make sure you keep it in the fridge or freezer to the last second. So get some pieces of the arrow. Try and handle it as least as possible because it will obviously be pretty delicate. So get every last bit of that on. And then finally, got you some lovely little crystallized leaves of lemon verbena. So just arrange them. These are literally like little flavor bombs. So fragrant. So keep on placing those. There we go. So a few more. There we go. Tiny bit of syrup just to end. And there you've got seriously fresh, full flavor, capaccio peaches, raspberries, verbena, like chocolate arrow. So next is, uh, this is a bit of nostalgia, two different ways. So we've got Black Forest, but also we've got Arctic Roll. So in here, we've got a uh, little Genoise around the outside, dark chocolate Genoise, then we've got a cherry jam, and then in the center, we've got a Kirsch parfait. So just take that off your plate, and that's just gonna go on there, stand that up. I'm gonna get a bit of my lovely little syrup. So this is Kirsch, it's cherries. Just want a little bit on the, on the top. Just falling off the sides as well and let's get some cherries and let's just place some of those nice poached cherries around the dish so get a few more on there get a couple on top there you go then what we want to do is We've got a little black forest cherry gel just here. Cut your little tip of your piping bag off. Some nice little pipings of the gel, like so. Then let's get some of our little dark chocolate, bits of chocolate pieces. Let's get them on the top. And then you can get a few kind of around the gel standing up. And then you've just got a nice little crunch of that bit of chocolate all the way around. Like so. Finish off a little bit of that poaching syrup. And you're all ready to go. So that is your Black Forest Arctic Roll. Some lovely little poached cherries on there, cherry gel. Hope you enjoy it. Last course, UB Chef menu this week. Got my cheeses, so they've been out 15 minutes, coming up to room temperature. Look, we send it to you all wrapped up nicely, all in order as well. So you've got your tasting notes just here, telling you about the cheeses, where they're from, the type of milk, all the information you need. So let's get them all lined up first of all. I'm just, I'm just using my little UB Chef board here. Manchego first, we've got Comte, a bit of Salagio going on there. And we've got the long, champagne and finally that lovely bit of gorgonzola we've matched it with a peach chutney so really really important everything is at room temperature so we're going to taste everything so much better a little bit of peach chutney on the side and then look at these lovely little fennel seed crackers so when you bite into it you just get that lovely little hit of fennel so get those stacked in Plenty of crackers on there to go for all the cheeses. And that, there you go, serve that at the table. Cheese notes alongside your chutney. What a way to finish uh, the menu. Hope you enjoyed this week's cook along. Uh, remember, next week's recipes, um, next week's menu, sorry, is all live. There's four weeks ahead, all ways you can plan ahead. Uh, have a look at next week's menu, more great dishes coming up. And for now, have a great week.